Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. This is Corey Heights. Some battles. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if they got us. If they did, maybe, maybe. So you will get better as a player during that year. So it was kind of exciting. Like, oh, yes, yeah, somebody wants me. Welcome to the Prep Athletics Podcast. I'm your host, Corey Heights, and the founder of Prep Athletics. And on this mini episode, we are going to talk about what it's like to work with me and the Prep Athletics team if you decide to choose to work with me and what this process looks like. So how do we begin? Uh, what are the steps that get us to the end result of ultimately choosing the right fitting prep school? So first thing that has to happen is we have to be introduced to each other. You can do that through either finding me proactively through my website or social media. The website is www.prepathletics.com or a parent might reach out to me, a coach, um, just a random person out there in the basketball world that thinks prep school might be a good option for a kid they know or have seen. Um, first thing we have to do is get connected. Secondly, once we get connected, I will send you a questionnaire uh, to see your highlights, your academics, um, kind of find out what your goals are. We'll obviously have to talk finances. And then if we decide to work together after that, um, we, we, we celebrate. All right, That's the first step is deciding that we're going to have a partnership with each other. Once we decide to do that, um, all my players have to make their own recruiting website. Why is that, you say? Well, the adults can do all the work. But since this is actually going to be for the student athlete, they need to have some agency in their future as well. So one of the first things I make them do is to make their own recruiting website. And these do not have to be fancy at all. In fact, an old adage I've seen is that the fancier a website is, the worse the player is. They're kind of trying to make up for their insufficiencies on the court with a fancy website. So I'm not worried about how good a website looks. In fact, I don't want it to look good. I just want vital information on there that a prep school coach would want to see. What does that include? Well, that's going to be your social uh, social media information, contact info for you, your parents, high score AU coach, your transcripts, your extracurricular activity, your highlights, uh, some game footage, so at least have your best quarter or best half on there um, so coaches can kind of see you in action to go along with your highlights, and your transcript and, and academics. And the nice thing about this website and one reason I have kids do it is that it is a living, breathing document. You can use this to send to college coaches on your own, whether you're going to prep school or not, and you can update it when changes happen. So say you bump up your ACT score three points, you can update it on there. Same for your GPA. Let's say you go out and have a great game of 20 points and 10 rebounds. You can put that new game on there and you can send it to college coaches and say, hey, hope all is well. Just wanted to show you the, my most recent game uh, where I had 20 and 10. Be sure to check it out. So this will be a living, breathing document you'll keep even through your prep school year until you sign with the college. So the website's one thing right there. Second thing is we will talk about what your goals are as a player. Do you want to go to a school that's very academic? Do you want to go to a military academy? Do you want to focus more uh, on basketball instead of academics? Do you want to go someplace rural? Uh, do you want to be on a team with 10 D1 guys or maybe one D3 guy or some blend uh, of between those two? So once we figure all that out, um, and once the website's built, I will go through my database of prep schools and start picking out 10 schools that I think are going to be the right fit for you. Now, where did this database came for, come from? It comes from doing this for 13 years. All right, that's how long I've been visiting prep schools. I've been to over 100, and each school I've got a profile on. And when I'm picking schools for my kids and clients, I will be going through this database and picking off schools that I think could be a good fit. Then of those schools I pick out, I'll then take out the top 10. And then on my end, for my eyes only, I'll rank those schools. So if I was picking a prep school for your your son or you as a player, you know, I'll rank those in order. And then those are the schools I'll reach out to with your website, with a little bit of a narrative about you and who you are and why you want to go to prep school and maybe some fun facts about you. And as well on there, I'll include the financial situation as well. Because there's two questions that prep school coaches always ask. The first is, how good is the kid? And the second is, what's the family willing to invest in this year? I wish it wasn't like that, but it is. You know, it, prep school ball is like D3. There's financial aid and merit aid available, and these coaches have to divvy that up amongst their team. So it's a very important part of their decision process. 
So that is what we'll do. We'll send that out to coaches. Next step is we will have talked to the kid and the family beforehand about what the next steps are. So once I send these 10 emails out to 10 different prep schools with a whole narrative and kind of a background on the player, those coaches will start reaching out. Well, who are they going to reach out to? Some families want to have the parents uh, and, the, and the coaches talk first. Other families want the kid to handle it. And what I have every kid do that I work with is to have a recruiting notebook. All right, here is where they're going to ask questions that are important to them of all these coaches. You know, whether that's, hey, what level do you think uh, you can place me at? How do you develop a player at my position? Who have you placed in the past at my position? Do you all offer college courses, et cetera, et cetera? Whatever questions are important to a family, they need to ask those questions of each coach, write down their answers, and they might reference that in the future if it comes down to two schools. Uh, there could be some information in here that will help separate the two, right, and help them make a decision. Um, and also, in this notebook, they're going to figure out uh, the players who reached out to him first, who's been in contact with him the most, who's showing the most energy, and which coach does he have or she have the best gut feeling about. Uh, a lot of this prep school um, decision making is uh, financial, and there's some decisions that make sense geographically, and academically, and athletically. But a major part of the whole prep school experience is the coach. The coach is determining playing time. He's the one setting up skill sessions for you, and ultimately, he's the one that's reaching out to college programs on your behalf. So the coach is very important. That's why this recruiting notebook is so important. Uh, to keep notes so it's fresh in your mind after and during a call, and you can reference it, especially if you're going to be making your decision months later and down the line. So once a player and their family has talked to some coaches, I will talk to them again. We'll kind of circle back, and we'll talk about each school. We'll find out which school the family liked and why, and I'll give them a brief, brief breakdown in each school. You know, hey, this school has 10 D1 guys. They've sent guys to the NBA. Or, hey, this school is very academic. These famous people have gone there. Um, they may, might not give financial aid. This school's in the middle of nowhere. It's all boys. You know, we'll go through these intricacies of each school. And ideally, if they can make it happen, the family should go visit the schools. Now, if it's a post-grad year, not necessary. Post-grad year is only nine months. These schools now have virtual tours. They've got beautiful websites. They've got YouTube channels. So you can do a lot of research just on the internet without having to see the site. Um, but it's a bonus if you can see it and meet the coach in person and kind of see where you're going. All right. So ideally, if we start in September or August with a family, they can do this in the fall before their basketball season starts. Then once they either had determined via visits or via conversations with coaches that they want to attend a school, then they will fill out the application, right? Part of the application process too is the financial needs based letter, or I'm sorry, website. Um, this is what college kids fill out for financial aid in college. It's pretty much the same form for families in the prep school world. And this can be time consuming. And that's one thing parents are going to have to fill out. And what this will do is it will spit out a number, both to the family and the prep school of how much the family can afford to pay. Now, it's not always the case that they're going to have to pay that. But that's a starting point for some prep schools. Some prep schools are all need based. And uh, whatever that number comes to be, that's the number you have to pay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and other prep schools, uh, use that number, and then they have merit as well, right? So merit is, hey, he's a good basketball player. We'll throw in some money here. Hey, he also plays another sport. We'll give him some money there. Oh, he might be from a place that's not represented at our school, whether it's a U.S. state or a country, um, and then they can get some money that way too. So families will have to fill out the financial aid form. But remember, in the initial email to coaches that I send out, I very, very clearly put up front what the family is willing to invest in this year. And coaches that, are, that think that number will work – reach out to the family. That number's not high enough. They'll let me know and I'll pass that along to the family as well. So we get that out of the way uh, in the very first conversation with a coach so it's not a surprise later. Uh, so if you take visits after that, uh, you apply to schools. The most consuming part of applying for a school is getting teacher recommendations. And you will, as a player, need to get an English recommendation uh, from your English teacher and a math teacher recommendation as well. And I've seen those cause hiccups um, as far as delaying the application goes. Some schools have rolling admissions where you can apply in September and they'll let you, let you know a few weeks later if you've got in and how much you have to pay. Other prep schools have to wait till March 10th. All right, that's kind of the big Super Bowl day in the prep school world because that is the day that acceptance letters go out 
and telling you how much in those acceptance letters you and your family are going to have to pay for tuition. All right, so let's fast forward to that point. Let's say we're on March 10th and a family gets back uh, multiple letters where they've gotten in and there's different price points. If the school you want to go to is more expensive than another offer you have, uh, that's where I can help you negotiate potentially and see if the school you really like will match that offer. There's no guarantees on this, but it has happened in the past. And, you know, I won't ever give a suggestion on where you should go to a prep school. That's always going to be the family's decision, not mine. And families ask it every year, hey, Corey, where should my son or daughter choose? What's the best option? And I don't I don't give that that information. That's that's my opinion where you should go, but ultimately you're the one going there as the player. You're the family that's had all the conversations with the coaches. You know in your heart what's going to be the best decision. All right. If you go to any of the schools I connect you with, they're going to be good options. It's just a matter of which one of those 10 schools and of those coaches that have reached out to you, which one of those is the right fit for you. Um, and then ultimately you guys will make a decision on which prep school to attend. And then that's when we all celebrate. So that's kind of the process on how I work with each family and how it works. If we're starting in a time like right now in September, you've got plenty of time to take visits, talk to coaches, uh, make sure you get a roster spot, make sure you can apply for financial aid. Uh, but if you also start after the season in April or May, uh, there's less financial aid available, less roster spots, but you can also make a decision quicker because coaches know how much money they have to spend on players and what roster spots they have open and what positions. So there's benefits to both. I like starting early just because you have more options. And one of the quotes I always say is options equal power. So anyway, that is a breakdown on how prep athletics uh, works and my process. And if you guys have any questions, always feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is on my website, which is once again, www prepathletics.com or reach out to me on any social media handle. If you like this podcast, be sure to subscribe to any of the uh, major podcasting platforms that host this. We've also got bonus content on YouTube if you want to subscribe there. So thanks so much for tuning in. See you next week.